Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are always appreciated. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I talk about the news that was in the news that I didn't get to go over, and therefore I missed it. I'm still away, yes, of course. I think that's been established, but... Still making sure that there are videos out there for everyone. And without further ado, uh, let's jump right into it. This this article's written a little weird, I won't lie, you'll see, but sure, why not? Polygon's Matic is now available on the Binance card in Argentina. As announced by a recent tweet, it says, this is great news for those who want to use their crypto to make purchases as it opens up a whole new world of opportunities. Told you the article is written a little weird. The Binance card is a prepaid card that can be used at 90 million merchants worldwide, offering up to 8% cash back on purchases. That's a bit intense. There are also no fees for ATM withdrawals, which is very important because I get tired of getting charged a fee. This huge development for Matic will undoubtedly increase its adoption. This is also positive news for Binance, which is looking to expand its reach into the Argentinian market. In general, the news that we got a couple of years ago from a lot of the big players in the cryptocurrency space was that they were actively trying to expand further in Latin America uh, and Africa and Southeast Asia as these areas were uh, ready for the building because historically we have seen uh, that a lot of banks tend to avoid these areas as the people there historically have not had a lot of money because of American government policies. But that's another conversation in and of itself. And therefore, uh, these people do not, a lot of people, not everyone, don't have proper access to a uh, financial system. And this is why, once again, uh, cryptocurrencies are very important. And this is why we've had Binance, Kraken, uh, Ripple to some extent, and also the people from Cardano and Jack Dorsey have mentioned many times that this is where they're trying to build because they think that this could be the area where crypto grows the fastest. So yeah, the Binance card in Argentina now has Polygon on it. I don't know exactly the reasoning for them specifically launching uh, Matic on that card in the country. But to be fair, Polygon, I've said before months ago, is incredibly popular now. I think it's going to be continue to be popular even in the next four or five years when we eventually end up getting the rest of Ethereum 2.0. Uh, but Polygon is big. It's going to continue to be big. Tons of people are using it. Tons of people are moving away from other platforms to go and use Polygon. So, uh, And there's also like mentioned somewhere in the article uh, something about like uh, people are doing it. Yeah, it says, uh, which reduces your exposure to the crashing peso. So Maybe that's why. Apparently, they have a USDT, USDC, BTC, Binance Coin, ETH, Cardano, Solana, and now Matic on that card as well. Yeah, I, I listen. A lot of times, you have to really, you know, things might not be the best everywhere, but just understand that you know an eight to nine percent inflation rate could be like seventy or eighty percent, and things could be a lot worse for you where you live. So, silver lining and all that. That's the Polygon is now on Binance card in Argentina, and I assume other places as well. I, I assume this is kind of like a, oh, and now it is also there, but it is other places already news. Yeah. Let's move on. In probably one of the most popular, and I mean, you know, hold your horses there. Following President Joe Biden's executive order on ensuring responsible development of digital assets, Federal agencies came up with a joint fact sheet on six principal directions for crypto regulations within the United States. It sums up the content of nine separate reports, which have been submitted to the president to articulate a clear framework for responsible digital asset development and pave the way for further action at home and abroad. And I'm going to preface a lot of this by simply saying, huh, hear me out here. I saw a lot of people uh, being angry with Joe Biden for this. The guy's like 139 years old. I assume not only did he not write any part of this, if you try to explain to him how Bitcoin works, 
he would probably go cross-eyed. Not making a joke, it's more of a... A lot of times people get upset at the wrong people. This man did not write that because he is... I'm trying not to use the word ancient, but let's let's be completely honest with ourselves. This guy does not know how crypto works. He's simply signing paperwork. Not standing up for Joe Biden, but it's, listen, just realistically... This man knows nothing about anything that's actually going on anymore. Let's be completely honest with ourselves. The fact sheet was published on the White House official website on the 16th of September and consists of seven sections. They are protecting consumers, investors, and businesses, promoting access to safe, affordable financial services, Fostering financial stability, that means for the U.S. dollar. Advancing responsible innovation. Reinforcing our global financial leadership and competitiveness, uh, U.S. dollar. And uh, fighting illicit finance. And finally, exploring a U.S. central bank digital currency. Some of the sections don't contain any particularly new information. Emphasizing one more time the principles and policies to which the present administration have been sticking. For example, to protect consumers and investors, the report urges regulators, the SEC and CFTC, to aggressively pursue investigations and enforcement actions against unlawful practices in the digital asset space. The idea, so for those of you who didn't get it, this was one of the most popular news stories, but anything with regulation, I tend to roll my eyes out and it kind of falls into news I missed because These people don't actually care about our space. They've been doing anything that they can to hinder adoptance of the cryptocurrency space. And as such, once again, we should have had crypto regulations five years ago. That's one, two, three, four, cinco. That's five years ago. And we still, once again, I'm even not in the States, but the U.S. still doesn't have uh, this framework, regardless of what is happening behind the scenes, or even in the cryptocurrency market. So this was like a general guideline, a framework, as they're calling it, for what they're planning on doing in the next coming years. And even then, stuff will still have to be signed and dated and all the other things like that. But this made popular news because it's like the first step to finally getting towards all these things. But it doesn't take that long. Like, it really should... Five years to come up with a a framework for what potentially you might think about actually doing. We also had news a couple of days ago that the SEC was like, yeah, it's probably going to take them 10 years to really evaluate exactly what is and isn't a security and how they plan on regulating the market. And it's like, why has every other country gotten it together except for this one? That's why I was like, you can't, you know, throw mud at Joe Biden because he also doesn't know what's going on. I'm pretty sure somebody else is using his computer for him. I'm pretty sure he still uses Skype. and He's not like actually, you know, using. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, this could potentially uh, be the beginning of something big as historically, for whatever reason, uh, we continue seeing people around the world looking to what the U.S. is going to be doing As far as regulations or the introduction of a Bitcoin ETF, for some reason, this is still super popular. There are other places on the planet, but alas, uh, the U.S. is constantly the the center of all of it, even amidst, uh, you know, we're we're very near to hyperinflation for those of you uh, who didn't get that before. So, cool. There's now a framework. Uh, It is abundantly clear from the messages in the the Senate and uh, congressional meetings that we heard about in 2018 and 19 that they're going to be trying to create their own central bank digital currency, a digital dollar, if you will. I'm sure it's already been created. They simply haven't rolled it out. That's just my, uh, you know, assumption through all of this. So sure, I uh, commend them on taking five years for doing something that it took other countries about six months to do. Uh, I hope they get it right. We all know that they won't. Uh, there's something actively going on behind the scenes, especially you you can't challenge the world reserve currency. It's going to challenge you right back. So I assume when regulations do finally come out in the year 2028 within the United States, uh, there's prob- it's probably going to be not very favorable for the cryptocurrency space. Uh, but at that point, Uh, people will have moved to other countries. There are multiple countries on the planet that have already 
have a 0% tax rate for crypto. Why would I even think of paying 25 or 50% when I can pay 0%? Why would I waste my time in a country where I don't have proper regulation for a business that I'm trying to get into when I can go to Germany or to France or I even think the UK has laws or Singapore or Japan or many places in Latin America and even Africa have proper cryptocurrency regulations already. So, cool. Yeah, see my sarcasm? Because it's warranted. Because the rest of the world has moved on and they already have cryptocurrency laws and rules. And 0% taxes. So, good job, people who wrote that uh, paperwork and then handed it to Joe Biden and told him to take credit for it. Because can you imagine? No, you can't. Can you imagine Joe Biden sitting in a room and coming up with crypto regulatory framework? Right. Yeah, see me neither. That's the White House has finally published Framework for Crypto Regulation News. And yeah, let's move on. Also in the news, in like what? Who, who made this? Between September of last year and mid-June of this year, Samsung, yes, that Samsung, the phone people, invested in 13 crypto blockchain companies, thus making the South Korean corporation the most active among the top 40 corporations who are investing in crypto. Google's parent company, Alphabet, on the other hand, tops the category of the top corporations that participated in the biggest funding rounds. According to research firm Block Data's analysis of investments in blockchain and crypto, by top comparisons between last September and this June, the South Korean electronics giant Samsung was amongst, amongst the, the most active, having invested in 13 companies. United Overseas Bank, which invested in seven companies and the most uh, active and followed by Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, and there's a little, pretty little chart right here. Uh, the most invested companies that we know of are Alphabet, BlackRock, no surprise, Morgan Stanley, and then it is Samsung, Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon, and PayPal, and that is by amount of investments. Uh, we have actively heard that Alphabet has invested $1.5 billion, BlackRock has $1.1 billion, Morgan Stanley has 1.1 billion, Samsung has 979 million, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I feel like we got news like this at the beginning of the summer as well, like somewhere along the lines of like, who's investing in this and how much money has been thrown into the market? Uh, so sure, uh, is anyone surprised? No, put your hand down. You, you are, there's, no, there's, there's zero surprises here. Uh, we all knew that this was happening, uh, especially the whole BlackRock thing and people still haven't gotten that through their heads, but sure. So I, I imagine these people who did not make the top seven of this list, you know, still relatively uh, high up there in the amount of money that's being sloshed around uh, in the background of this market and all the infrastructure that's being built uh, by all of these companies to make sure that they're, you know, they have their hand in the pot somewhere. So yeah, the news is um, rich people, excuse me, excuse me, institutions and companies are actively investing billions of dollars in the cryptocurrency space. And that's just what their companies are doing. You know, that's not even uh, the amount that the people who are running these corporations are actually uh, holding and or investing in themselves. Because we had news like that before and people forget that. Well, a lot of times you'll hear that a company is into crypto. And I'm like, do you think the CEO has 0% exposure to cryptocurrencies as well? Do you think he's like, no, no, no I'm fine. I don't... I don't I don't really want to make any more money. I think I'm fine where I am. Yeah, see, that sounds weird, right? Anyway, that's the corporations are in crypto. And they're building infrastructure because money news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news... Shiba Eternity, okay, Shiba Inu's, it says much anticipated, I never heard of it, game, is now available for users on the Play Store in Australia, according to an announcement. As reported by you today, the game was originally launched by Apple's App Store users in the country last week. On Sunday, 
Lead developer Shaitoshi Kusama, okay, confirmed that Australia was likely to be the last test location for the cryptocurrency. Prior to that, the game was successfully tested in Vietnam, as reported by you today. The game became a hit in the country, which prompted the developers to boost the capacity of servers 50 fold. So I don't know what the game does. I'm going to logically assume, hear me out here. It's probably a play to earn game. Can anyone confirm this where you play and you earn money from it? Uh, these games have become quite popular in a number of places around the world. Uh, which has uh, lower wages, as far as I have understood it. It's the same thing with the game Axie Infinity. The reason why it became so popular, and you can find little you know, uh, news segments or videos online as well, is that people who were making 50 cents or a dollar equivalent per hour uh, found out that they can simply play a video game and they were making $2.50, maybe $3.50, per hour, so it was more uh, financially advantageous for them to be able to do that. And I assume this is one as well. Uh, so yeah, well, Shiba Inu is always in the news. It's a really big, and, I, and once again, it's Shiba Inu. It's not Dogecoin. I wonder what happened to all the Dogecoin news, because remember, we it was non-stop, especially when Muskie was talking about it all the time. Shiba Inu is in the news about five times a day. All the time. And it's... it's <laughs> It's quite fascinating to see the shift uh, in popularity, and we still haven't heard Elon Musk uh, stand up for Shiba Inu, which is kind of weird because it is more popular now than Dogecoin. We've gone over the maps. For those of you who missed that video and, and just sucked your teeth, uh, find a map. Like There are maps uh, that show around the world like the most popular crypto. It's constantly Bitcoin, and then Shiba Inu, and then Ethereum, and then Cardano, like consistently. There's like some sprinkles of XRP in there, and even in Europe, I think there was like only two countries that like were actively searching for a lot of times Dogecoin. In the States, it was also Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and Shiba Inu. Very, very fascinating. Yeah. That's the Shiba Inu has a game on the Play Store. It appears to only be in Australia at the moment. I, we will definitely get news about when it's available everywhere. Yeah. Let's move on. I uh, sorry for screaming. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. Uh, I do hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fantastic. If you've played that game, tell me if it works. I know there are a lot of... It's really funny. Years ago, in 2017, the idea was that uh, play... No, no. Any type of game that was on blockchain, about blockchain that that would kind of push us into the forefront of uh, adoption. So it's fascinating to see like all these games coming out and people actually playing them. I don't think any of them are like worldwide famous, but we will eventually get there. There's going to be some blockchain-based cryptocurrency game that's going to send people up the wall and people will love it. Yeah. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking. Do you all soon. See you.